Hey guys, welcome back to Matchnik Garage. Today we are going to start working towards getting the front axle redone for the LS swap F-150. If uh, you haven't seen that, go back in the other videos, check that out. We put a 5.3 LS and a 4L 60E in a 1977 Ford F-150 4x4. And we took it, we got it running, took it out for a drive, short drive, but you know, a good test. Um, come up with a couple of things that we've got to repair on that or improve, I should say. Um, but today we're gonna to work on getting, uh, I don't know if you can see it there, getting the front Dana 44 out of this parts truck. I think that's gonna be a better, a better front axle to rebuild, rebuild uh, just seals and stuff. I think the bearings will all be fine. Uh, we already did use the rear axle from this truck. It was a Ford nine inch. Um, and put that in the uh, LS swap F-150. So uh, let me flip you around and I'll show you show you what we're doing. All right, so this is a 78 F-150, four by four, obviously. Uh, I bought this as a parts truck. Um, it was sitting in the farm field since, uh, well, the date on the battery was early in 1998. Um, that was the, there was no plates or anything like that. And the farmer just did not remember. Um, so I'm going with very late nineties. It was sitting, um, not sure why it was parked. Um, but as of right now, you know, I, I probably would have done something with it, but the rear half of the frame was rotted out. That's why it's now missing, trying to save some space. Uh, the bed was completely shot. I don't think I've ever seen one so bad. Um, this is a 351M in a C6 automatic transmission. The engine is locked up solid. Uh, I could not get that thing to turn. I have no use for it, so I really didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, these 351Ms are a dime a dozen since I don't really think anybody really wants them. But... What I do want is this Dana 44 high pinion uh, front axle and 77 and 78 front axles are slightly different in the way that they mount. Um, this one, you probably can't see it. This whole end here up until here is all cast. And then the tube mounts into this casting. On the 77, You've got this, the axle tube comes all the way out to the the outer C knuckle, and then the wedges weld on to the the uh, axle tube. So, uh, for what I'm going to do with the truck, this will be just fine. Um, my also my other thought process is the other axle is most likely stronger, being that it has the tubes all the way out to the knuckles. Um, and then we can use that for something else, build it up, uh, you know, as strong as a Dana 44 can be. Um, you know, obviously it's no 60, we're not going to put 40s on it or anything like that, but um, this would be a good start. This also has a different steering setup. If you watched my last video, I explained that uh, my steering's all out of whack on the the LS Swap F-150 is as a Y-Link, where basically it comes up from this wheel, goes to the pitman arm, and then the tie rod from this wheel goes up to the middle of that other tie rod. I don't really want that. You know, it really, really changes the geometry as the suspension travels. Um, this one just has the tie rod that goes all the way across, knuckle to knuckle, and then it has a drag link that goes from the tie rod there up to the steering box. So I know I could put these tie rods and all that on the other axle, but the other truck was a plow truck. And if the front axle is any type of the same shape as the rear axle was, it's gonna be beat up. So the other thing we need off of here is steering box. I'm hoping this one's good. Well, good enough. Um, the other one leaks pretty bad. Um, so we're gonna try this one. New steering boxes are, you know, four or $500 after shipping. 
I just, I don't want to spend that kind of money on it right now. So if we can get by with this one for a little bit, uh, we're going to go that route. Um, but we're also going to need to see if the trailing arms, where they bolt onto the frame there, they've got bushings. And a lot of times they just rot away inside the bushings and then there's nothing left of the trailing arm. So hopefully we can get a good pair of trailing arms out of the four of them. And then the other thing we need is this upper spring bucket here um, on the other truck. It's rotted out right here. There's a hole in it. You can't get these aftermarket uh, in a factory configuration. And I'm not looking to go modified and have, um, you know, a fabricated spring bucket on there. It's just, it's not necessary for what we're doing with the truck. So... Little bit of different video here than, uh, you know, working on the truck, but we'll get this out and then we'll start tearing it down to see what it all needs and go from there. Yeah, so I've already started collecting parts uh, over the past few weeks, you know, anticipating having to go through it. Um, if it's anything like the rear axle was, the pinion seal is gonna be so dried out and, you know, the axle seals are gonna be bad. Um, so I've got all the seals already that I'm gonna need. Um, I think I'm waiting for you joints yet. Uh, I've got tie rods and whatnot coming. Um, it just didn't make any sense to me to put these old parts on there when I, I know, I know damn well that they're going to, the ball joints on the end of the tie rods are, they're just going to go loose as soon as we get five miles down the road. You know, they haven't seen grease in 25 years or whatever, if not longer than that, you know, the way people maintain stuff. So we'll uh we'll get this apart and see what's going on with it if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want to follow along with some of these you know we're not always going to be playing with ford trucks uh it just happened to be that you know i bought the plow truck the, the ls swap f-150 and decided to start swapping then i came across this one super cheap so i bought that one and then I came across that one, which I'm officially going to call the blind date high boy. Because, um, you know, I just shouldn't have went and got it. So um, what we do need to do, we need to come up with a name for, for our LS swap truck here. Um, I do have names for pretty much all of my vehicles. Um, even the ones I don't have anymore. They all had names for one reason or another. I had a tow truck that was called Franklin. Because as soon when I got it, it was slow as a turtle. So you can connect the dots on that one. So everything's got a name. I just haven't come up with a good one for that truck yet. Some people might call it a giant fail. Well, that's your opinion. I call it a win. You know, it starts and goes and does does all the things. So if you got any name suggestions for it, drop them down in the comments. And... Uh, we'll see we'll see if there's any good ones so i'll get you set up here and you know i don't have anybody to hold the camera for me things just don't work that way around here always working by myself so i'll get you set up i'll bring you in close uh when there's actually something to see and uh we'll try to get this front end out and then we'll start pulling it apart and see what's inside all right we're going to start first just getting the tires off Get the front of the frame up on jack stand so we can let the axle droop all the way down. Probably, uh, I'd like to say unbolt the shocks, but I doubt that's going to happen. We'll be cutting those off. Get it all the way down. Got to get the front drive shaft unbolted yet. Um, you know, that sort of thing. So we'll just get at it, go little by little, one piece at a time, and eventually it'll be out here sitting on jack stands. All right, now we're gonna get this top spring keeper off. See if we can't get this coil spring out of the way. And then there's a bracket right here for the uh, track bar mount. Uh, we'll get those two bolts out. We'll just drop the whole bracket because it's gonna save it anyway. And then uh, we'll move on to the next thing.
and drop the axle down and see if we can't pull the springs out. So I have this cup in there, bolt down, and then a tab that holds the, uh, the end of the spring. So luckily that's not all rotted at all. We should be able to clean that up and uh, reuse it. And uh, clean up just fine. I'm thinking those springs will be better than the ones that are in the other truck. Uh, mainly because this truck never had a plow on it. So we'll see how that goes. See once we get them out, compare them. Yeah. I've heard stories of these being all rotted out and you can't get these either. As far as I'm aware. So that's a good sign. Now those bolts are just, they're like brand new. I just don't understand it. And that's important. There you go. All right. Well, I'm going to work on getting that drive shaft out of there. It's dark under there. You're not going to be able to see anything. So once they get that out, I'll bring you back in and we'll unbolt the radius arms. All right. Well, you can see over there, I got the drive shaft hanging. Uh, I ended up taking the shocks off just because they were going to be in the way. So now we're looking at these two big bolts here. These are the back side of the trailing arms where they got these bushings that I was talking about. So right here is going to determine whether these trailing arms are any good or not. Because if that shaft is all, uh, you know, rotted away, um, there's only so much we can do being that these are cast. I don't know that we can really weld to them effectively or at least i don't have the ability to do it so let's see if these nuts come off there's two of them and then uh, then the front axle is loose we can drag it out to the side and then there's four bolts around the wedges that will be able to pull them off the axle Definitely on there. No, well, doesn't look too bad. I've definitely seen worse. So let's move over to the other one. Oh, dusty. Let's move over to the other and we'll see if we can get that one off. my hood up I think it's gonna rain rust on me I 
Probably have to get some heat on that one. There's still threads left. I believe these are supposed to be uh, tacked onto the bracket there. Now that one's significantly worse than the other one. I don't even know if you can see it. To where right here it's just it's just wore down. I don't know if you can see that. But, like I said, when we pull the axle out of the other truck, we'll see which trailing arms are better right here. Um, the other side, I'm not too concerned about, but right there, that's the killer. So, let's see if we can get the, uh, the front bolts out. There, around the wedges, there's two bolts on the top, two bolts on the bottom. And then uh, we'll pull the axle out of here. All right. Let's see what the, yeah, these two bolts here. So now we've got a, a wedge here and wedge here. And there's bushings in there. I've already got new ones. So let's see if these two bolts and the two bolts on the bottom will come out. I sprayed them down a little bit with some PB blaster to hopefully leave the threads in the trailing arm. for the others. Maybe we just needed it broke loose. All right, now that it's all undone, let's drop the bottom and see if we can't slide it up. These are the these are the wedge bushings. These ones actually aren't too bad. The ones I've got in the other truck, they are all see it's kind of exploded and cracked off the side. The other ones are about three times worse than this. But we'll put new ones in.
appear to be a right and left. They kind of look the same. Definitely a top and bottom for that uh, spring perch or coil spring perch bump mounts. And a little bit of rust scale in there but not the end of the world. So those aren't too bad. I think what we should do now, we'll get it up on uh, jack stands here and then we'll, uh, we'll pull the differential cover off and see what the gears look like. We're just going to Hercules it up there. these tie rods off of here, we'll get the jack bar off, and then we can actually get to the cover. just purse and it'll come off. It's not gonna hurt it. So I'll set this upside and you know compare the new ones to the old ones. Pushing is toast, you know, but almost guarantee it's original. Put that off to the side just in case. Right. So, a little brain pan. Still got the original gear tag on it, which is this has 350 gears. You know, that's why I was able to use the other differentials. Uh, all the gears are the same. Say that we'll put that back on. Doesn't hurt. I need something to put these bolts in. Somebody's been in there. I'm glued back on. Doesn't look terrible.
Definitely have smelled worse than worse oil than that. You know, if you know, you know. I'm gonna go put this on my oil, my oil tote so it can drain out. Tip this up a little bit so it can do its thing. Excessive play. Yeah, I think I think this one looks better than the, the nine inch rear axle look. That one had a little bit of surface rust in it at the top half from sitting. Um, I would imagine as the vent was wide open. So this is a good sign. The gears look really good. You know, that's probably attributed to, um, you know, with the lockout hubs and it in two wheel drive, this center section shouldn't be spinning in theory. Um, but what, I think a lot of people who did back in the day left their hubs in and just took it out of four wheel drive with the transfer case. And, you know, so then this was spinning, but that doesn't appear to be the case. But at the same time, this truck only had 90,000 miles. Um, so, you know, the way all the bolts come out, the way, you know, all the odd pieces that would normally be wore out or show wear, you know, at 190,000, just they're not there. You know, all the bolts come out clean. You know, the rust that's here is from sitting, you know, in a grass field, you know, it's just in the moisture. And the the, the lake, the lake that he was next to, the, the water table is not that far down. So, you know, I'm real, real impressed with how things come apart, and I fully believe this only has 90,000 on it, so. But I think what we'll do is uh, probably pull one caliper off, and then uh, see, I don't know which side, but probably really doesn't matter. We'll pull a caliper off, we'll see what the wheel bearings look like. See if those are salvageable yet, or if we need to get wheel bearings for it. And uh, I'm just gonna let that drain, um, probably for a couple of days, because I won't be back here. I won't be working on it for a couple of days, at least. Um, you know, waiting to get the parts in. So, but there's seals on both sides of the carrier. I've got those and I've got the tool to put them in. So we're gonna do those. We'll pull the carrier out. Got new joints coming, um, new bearings for inside the spindle. And I've got a new seal for the pinion because I can almost guarantee that is dry. But from the looks of this, it's probably still sealing like there's no surface rust in here. So, but we'll move down to the end and we'll pull a, we'll pull a knuckle or a, uh, a hub off and Pull the spindle off and see what it looks like. Well, let's start pulling this caliper off. I know you can get all these pieces. That one even has anti-seize on it. But I know you can get all these pieces. So I'm not super worried about saving too many. 
I think that needs to be driven out. You know, I'm just not just not super familiar with some of these setups. You know, when I worked in auto shops, you know, nothing has this stuff anymore. So a lot of this is the first time doing it. You know, it's not super complicated. It's just got to figure it out as you go. Drive that out the rest of the way. See if we can't knock. See if we can knock this off the jack stands. that later cut this brake on because why is it red Let's see how closed up this is I don't know if you can see that but it's it shrunk up pretty good we'll be putting new ones on anyway just can't trust that old stuff. Look at that, brake pads are still shiny. Well, it's probably just because of the galvanizing. That doesn't sound too healthy, though. Pull this lockout off. I do have new lockouts. Because on both trucks, these are not well. These ones you can't even turn by hand. I had to unlock them when I got it. I had to use the pliers. You know, I'm just really going for mechanical restoration at this point, as far as, you know, brakes and four-wheel drive system goes. You know, and if I take it out, if I want to drive two hours away in the thing, I want to make sure that I'm not going to lose a wheel bearing or, you know, that sort of thing. Because I don't know anything about you know, when maintenance was done on anything, of, you know, before I got it. to hold the guts in. Use the wrong tool to pull this out. into the axle shaft. Yeah, that holds the uh, the gear to go, that's on the splines of the axle shaft from the lockout that holds that on. Let's put that there just in case we need it later. I don't know if 
to be the real players now. Yeah, so that snap ring held that on, and that's what locks the axle to the hub in combination with this other piece down there. I believe you might be missing some parts in there. So I think there's supposed to be a spring. Maybe the spring is behind this part. There's gotta be a spring somewhere. Right there. So yeah, that keeps this outside gear splines into the hub, and this one splines onto the axle shaft. And when you lock it, they lock together like that to lock the hub to the axle shaft. So it goes like that, and then this inside collar, when you release it, can spin free in there. I can see I don't have the correct socket for the spindle nuts, so we'll have to get one of those for reassembly anyway. It's coming out hard. Seems like they had Loctite on that. so both nuts can't turn on their way off. They can't, they're just locked together, locked against this, and it's got the little tab locked into a keyway, so this can't turn. That should turn. Shouldn't be a whole lot of pressure on this one. Seeing all this fresh grease in here gives me hope that uh, the bearings are still good. And maybe we'll just use these hubs and put new rotors on. These have captive rotors. So what that means is you got the rotor here and then this here is the hub and you have to pound the studs out, pull the hub off, pound the studs out, rotor comes off the back side and then you put new studs in, hold the new rotor to the hub. Should be able to pull this whole hub off. What is going on? Some kind of different. I've never seen that before. It's like a dished washer. 
goes around there. I wonder if that's to keep the grease on the inside there. Now we got whistle. Alright, but any cone looks good. Definitely not enough grease in here for my taste. You can't have too much grease. It's just not a thing. I'll tell you, one thing that drives me nuts about some hardware out there. So you got a 7 16 bolt. It's got a 5 8 head, but an 11 16 nut. A 3 8 bolt has a 9 16 head and a 9 16 nut. Wait, why does it got to be different for this? Doesn't make any sense. You can see the shield's a little rotten at the bottom. Right. Little gasket. So that one's tore and just all sorts of cracked up. But I've got new ones of those. And I've got, there's a bearing in here that the axle shaft rides on right there. I've got new bearings for that. I just, I just assumed they would be a bit rusty and they are. But that seal wore out and I believe there's another seal here of some sort. So we'll get all these parts cleaned up before we go back together. Now this, does anybody know? So it's got, I, I don't usually run these. I don't usually put them back on, you know. I understand the concept, but do I gotta have this ring here for proper spacing to space that spindle out? Or can I just leave this off and put the spindle back on? I don't want it to throw geometry off or anything like that for the center of the U-joint and the center of the ball joints. Um, but let me go down in the comments if you know on Dana 44 do I need the thickness of this ring on there because that's rusted it's bent up I don't want it caliper bracket and here's no excessive wear I'll get that cleaned up got a lot of rust scale on it but not too bad The U joint is actually still solid. Now this is another thing I was worried about: the seal surface right here. But that looks nice. There's no groove. Maybe ever so slightly, but nothing you could catch your fingernail on. And we'll be doing new ball joints in here too. I've got those. I figured if we're this far, we might as well put ball joints in it. I mean, they're still tight, but I just, you know, we're this far into it. Just do it. They're cheap. Cheap versus spending all the time to tear it all back apart. And we'll just do it the first time and go that route. Well, I got the one side apart. I got a good idea of what's going on in there now, what parts we're gonna need. I think I am gonna try and get brakes for it. Um, you know, it doesn't really seem to be worth putting old brakes off the other one. That I, I know they work and this and that, but from this far into it, you might as well just do it. Um, I'm willing to bet that this side bearings and all that are gonna be the same. You know, surprisingly, the U-joints are even solid. This one's greasable. I think the U-joints I have coming are not. Uh, it seemed to be hard to find greasable ones for this. I, I don't know what the deal was there. 
but and the gears here, I don't know if you can see, there's, I don't know, some weird staining, but other than that, there's like no wear to them. So, but what I want to do is get this all cleaned up. Um, get it all cleaned up. The bearings should be fine in the hub. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get those cleaned up and repacked, new seals, that sort of thing. And I want to get this all wire wheeled and painted up nice. Um, I've got the rear one all painted up nice, so little by little we'll get, you know, the underside of the truck painted, you know, eventually anyway. But trailing arms here, you know, we'll get those painted up too. We'll determine whether the other ones are better than these or we'll use the best pair of them. Well, that's going to be it for today. Um, like I said, I've just been collecting parts and, you know, got it, it, it takes a while, you know, it takes a while to get all the parts and it, it adds up to, you know, quite a bit of money too, but you know, it's worth it in the long run. I want to be able to drive this wherever we need to drive it. Um, you know, the reliability of it. I don't want to worry about wheel bearings and, you know, that sort of thing. So new brakes, new wheel bearings, uh, new brake lines. I think, I think most of the lines on the truck are already new. I know I did the uh, line front to back and on the axle, the rear axle itself. Um, so I've got to get soft lines for the front. The 77 lines seem to be a little different than the 78 lines. So another good reason to switch to this, uh, we'll be able to use the 78 lines and they seem easier to get as well. Um, it's like the 78 and the 79 parts are significantly easier to get than 77 and older. Um, I know there's LMC truck and all that, but um, I do like to, I like to get a lot of parts out of Rock Auto. Um, you know, they've got just about every brand. They are substantially cheaper than everybody else, it seems. Um, and then if they don't have it, then I start looking elsewhere, but um, it's not a plug for them or anything like that just where I get the parts, you know, you know, spend a lot of money, get a free magnet, you know, that kind of thing, whatever, if you're into that. So, but that's where we're going to end it today. And, uh, we'll catch you next time and hopefully we can get some stuff painted up and go from there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. You know, if you just want to say hi, just want to say, you know, you want to throw me some hate for putting an LS in a Ford, I'm okay with that too. Everybody's entitled to their opinion and I'm willing to listen. So uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.